aspirants. So to start with today's news, CAG team works to increase synergy among ministers. So this comes under GS2 constitutional body. For prelims, you need to study about the basic about CAG body. So the Constitution of India under Article 148 provides for there should be an independent office of CAG and who is the head of the Indian Audit and Account Department and it is one of the bulwark of democratic system of government and he is the guardian of the public person control the entire financial system both at center level and state level. We don't have separate CAG for the state level. We have only uh, one body for both center and state level and his duty is to uphold the constitution of Indian law, uh, India and laws in the field of financial administration. Yeah. So, constitutional provision is under Article 148. It deals with the CAG appointment oath and condition of service. Under Article 149, it deals with the duties and powers of CAG. 150 says that the accounts of the union and states shall be kept in such form as the president may on that base of the CAG prescribe. And 151 says that the reports of the CAG relate to the accounts of union shall be submitted to the president who shall cause them to be laid before each house of parliament. And article 279 says that the calculation of net proceeds is ascertained and certified by the CAG whose certificate is final. So the CAG is appointed by the President of India by a warrant under his hand and say CAG holds office for a period of 6 years or up to the age of 65 years and he can resign any time from his office by addressing the resignation letter to the President. He can also be removed by the President on the same ground and in the same manner as the Judge of Supreme Court. Report. He submit his audit reports relating to the accounts on center and state to the president and governor. Then they will replace them, uh, place them into the house of parliament or state legislature. Submit three audit report to the president. One is audit report on appropriation account, audit report on finance account, and audit report on public undertakings. Okay. So the constitution has made the following provision to safeguard and ensure the independence of CAG that is he is provided with the security of tenure and can be removed by the president only in accordance with the procedure mentioned in the constitution. He does not hold the, his office till the pleasure of the president. He is not eligible for further office and his salary and other service condition are determined by the parliament. Neither his salary nor his right in respect of leave of absence, pension or age of retirement can be altered to his disadvantage of the disappointment. Administrative uh, expense uh, that will be charged upon the Consolidate Fund of India. No minister can represent the CAG in parliament and no minister can be called upon to take any responsibility for his action. And Digital India Bill to be released in June. So this comes under GS3 cyber laws. The safe harbor provision have been defined under the section 79 of IT Act and it protects social media intermediaries and this act give them immunity from legal prosecution. So this protection uh, shall be applicable if intermediary does not in any way initiate the transmission of a message or select the receiver of the transmitter message and does not modify any uh, information. So as long as the platform acts, uh, the, the messenger carrying a message from point A to point B without interfering in any manner, it will be safe from any legal prosecution. The protection accorded under section 69, however, is not guaranteed if the intermediary despite being informed or notified by the government. Intermediary must not tamper with any evidence of which message or content present on its platform. So intermediary guidelines is uh, the guidelines has asked all the social media platform to set up a grievance redressal and compliance mechanism. It included appointing a resident a grievance officer, chief complaints officer and a nodal contact person. The MAIT has the, the, this Ministry of Electronics and IT had also asked this platform to submit monthly reports on complaints received from user and action taken. A third requirement was for instant messaging app was to make provision for tracking the first originator of a message. The failure to comply with any one of these requirements would take away the indemnity provided to social media 
intermediaries under section 79 of the IT Act. Okay, then update NPR to enumerate self. So, uh, this comes under a GS2 government policies and interventions. So, the census means it provides information on size, distribution and socio-economic, demography and other character of, uh, characteristics of country's population. Census was first stated under British Viceroy Lord Mayo in 1872. And it helped in framing new for policies, government programs to uplift areas of improvement. The first synchronous census in India was held in 1881. Since then, census have been undertaken uninterruptedly once every 10 years. The census is one of the most credible source of information on the following like demography, economic activity, uh, literacy and education, housing and household amenities, urbanization, fertility and mortality, scheduled caste and scheduled tribes and languages. The objective of the NPR is to create a comprehensive identity database of every usual resident in the country. While well, similar data is collected through census, according to the section 15 of the Census Act 1948, all individual level information collected in census is confidential and only aggregated data are released at various administrative levels. So, usual resident is defined for the purposes of NPR as a person who has resided in a local area for the past 6 months or more or a person who intend to reside in that area for the next 6 months or more. Thank you. If you have any queries, feel free to contact this number. Have a great day.